good evening. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And I offer no apologies tonight for my race or for my color. Thank you, Vivica. Wow. 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 I'm humbled by her introduction and inspired even more to implement the NAACP's agenda with a sense of urgency. Now, the standard thing to say when you are introduced by a nine-year-old is to say that she is our future. But she was here, right now in the present. And when I look at Vivica, I am so proud to say that courage will not skip her generation. Let's give her a big, big round of applause. Officers and members of the NAACP, National Board President and CEO, and my colleague in the struggle, Benjamin Todd Jealous, new father of Jackson Epperson Todd Jealous. <laughs> to the National Office staff, delegates, observers, and friends of the NAACP, Welcome to Houston and the opening session of the 103rd Annual Convention. I'm blessed to have my parents here tonight, along with my godmother, Hazel Dukes. I want to say thank you to mom and dad and my extended family who are here for your unconditional love and support, and especially for your patience with me as I have engaged for more than 28 years in this labor of love with the NAACP. Mom and Dad, I love you, and I thank you so much. This evening, we're here in Houston, and it is most fitting that I pay tribute to one of our fallen NAACP members, the Honorable Dr. Annie B. Martin. She left us a legacy of leadership, but she also left us the widow's might. We thank her, we celebrate her, and we salute her. Thank you, Dr. Annie B. Also, we remember tonight our colleague Willis Edwards from Los Angeles, California, who is literally battling for his life. We ask you that you will keep Willis in your prayers at this very hour. We love you, Willis, and we thank you. But we are here in Houston, Texas, and I would be remiss if I did not pay tribute to Mrs. Lula Bell Madison White, a civil rights heroine who devoted most of her adult life to the struggle against Jim Crow in Texas. She campaigned for the right to vote, for equal pay, and for equal work and for desegregation of public facilities. She is a legend across this state. And so it is fitting that the theme of this year's convention is NAACP, my power, my decision, vote. We cannot take these words lightly. As members of the NAACP, we know our history and winning the right to vote for people of color. We also know that many in this convention hall are deeply connected to those who sacrificed and died for the right to vote. Our right to vote is under attack more than at any other time in history since the passing of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. We overcame then 
and we shall overcome now. But we can only overcome if we are willing to dedicate ourselves to fighting a battle that many of us thought we had won long ago. Four years ago, it was easy for people to get excited and become part of a movement about the 2008 election. The country was on the brink of economic collapse, and a charismatic leader was rallying the nation with a message of hope and a message of change. Millions of Americans exercised their votes. They made an affirmative decision, and they voted for change. Election night 2008 was the end of the process for far too many in our community when it should have been just the beginning. Instead of exerting our power again in 2010 midterm elections, many of us stayed at home and across this land, people who do not share our values or our vision for America won majorities in the Congress and state houses. They immediately passed laws to remove safety net provisions for the poor and the vulnerable. They scaled back the rights of workers to organize, restricted the rights of women, and attacked the dignity of new immigrants. And in what proved to be our own wake-up call, erected systematic barriers to our right to vote. In short, my friends, they changed the rules of the game. They used their power, their influence, and a whole lot of money to distort elections through misinformation. But in four months, it's game time again. And too much is at stake for us to sit on the sidelines wringing our hands we have to take action and get back in the game and make it our own. As the young people say, don't hate the players, change the game. In the face of an onslaught of state restrictions on voting, the NACP will register this year one million new voters in time for the November election. We can't do it without you, but we must elect a Congress in 2012 and 2014, and every two years thereafter, that will do the will of the people. From school board elections, to city council and mayoral elections, to county councils and ex executive elections, to state legislative and gubernatorial elections, to the congressional houses, and all the way up to the presidential elections. The NAACP will be at the polls. We will register, we will educate, we will mobilize, we will agitate, and we will cast our votes and ensure that every vote is counted. Our battle cry for this year, my friends, must be that this is my power. This is my decision. And tell the nation, this is my vote. Today, the enemies of justice are not lynching African Americans and practicing Jim Crow laws of segregation. They are more sophisticated, but they are equally sinister. They are erecting barriers to economic viability, educational quality, health care accessibility, judicial equity, and political opportunity. The opponents of justice are more refined but they are equally threatening. To address this new normal in American society, the National Board of Directors developed a new game plan to guide our work 
for the next several years. Our mission remains the same, to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights of all persons, and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. Our core is constant, but we are adapting new strategies to help achieve our mission in the face of contemporary antagonist of justice. Implementing our strategic plan with discipline and determination will help us serve the present age more effectively. You will hear more information about this compelling plan during the week. But I want to give you a glimpse of the NAACP's game changers. These game changers are key areas of emphasis that if we are successful, no, 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 not if we are successful, but as we are successful, will make life measurably better for millions of people and families and communities that long for liberty and justice for all. And as we continue the journey in our second century, here are the bright lights that will guide our way. In the area of economic sustainability, we intend that every person will have equal opportunity to achieve economic success, sustainability, and financial security. In education, we intend that every child will receive a free, high-quality, public, pre-K through grade 12 education. In health, we intend that everyone will have equal access to affordable, high-quality health care, and racially disparate health outcomes will end. Public safety and criminal justice, we intend that every person will be treated fairly and with dignity by the criminal justice system. Disproportionate incarceration, racially motivated policing, and racially biased bias sentencing will end. And the death penalty, Mr. President, will be abolished in the United States of America. <laughs> Civic engagement and participation. We intend that every American will have free, open, equal, and protected access to the vote and fair representation at all levels of the political process. With laser-sharp focus, we believe that we have created a comprehensive civil rights agenda that will address the political and social dynamics of the day. In 1955, when Rosa Parks, a NAACP branch secretary and youth advisor, sat down on the bus in Montgomery, Alabama, refusing to give up her seat, that NAACP was a game changer. By her courageous action, we were no longer simply protesting racial segregation in public transit of Montgomery. We were, in fact, defying it. And this historic game changer birthed the year-long Montgomery bus boycott that demonstrated to the world our moral commitment and determination to end segregated busing. It pricked the consciousness of a nation and ignited the civil rights movement. And as they say, the rest is history. But we don't have to look far and that deep into our history to see our game-changing spirit at work. I'm glad tonight that the NAACP is still on the job because in April of this year, the NAACP, led by board member Scott Exdale, provided some of the key leadership in convincing the Connecticut State Conference and its governor to repeal the death penalty, a penalty that, as you know, falls disproportionately on communities of color and the poor. This game-changing criminal justice event gave us confidence right now 
that we are not fighting a hopeless cause. We will not rest in this nation until the death penalty is banned throughout the United States as it is in most of the civilized world. Last month, in New York, we took on another seemingly intractable problem that had become so pervasive that few thought we could turn it around. In New York City, the number of routine stop and frisk by police officers reached almost 700,000 per year. Guess who they were stopping? African-American men and young Latino men. They were being stopped as quote-unquote suspects solely because of their race. And whether it was the shocking outrage of the killing of Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida, or the cumulative effect of so many years of our young people being profiled and criminalized by the police, the NAACP led by President and CEO Benjamin Todd Jealous board member Hazel Dukes, organized labor and other coalition partners, organized a Father's Day silent march to end racial profiling. This intergenerational march of more than 70,000 people walked in silence for, for, for 32 blocks. When Mayor Bloomberg and the Police Commissioner Kelly saw this significant game-changer event, they quickly changed their media statements and admitted that their procedures needed to be changed. I stopped by tonight to tell you, NAACP, when we stand our ground, things will change. One of the most significant health care game changers in American history happened late last month when the Supreme Court of the United States upheld by a five to four margin the constitutionality of most of the Affordable Care Act. We believe that access to affordable, high quality health care is a civil and a human right that should not be reserved for the wealthy or the few when disparities disproportionately affect one group of people more than another. The NAACP must raise the question, are root causes associated with social injustices? African Americans continue to have the highest rates of chronic diseases in this country. Think about this, my friends. If black America was its own country, it would rank 16th in the world for HIV. One in 16 black males and one in 32 black females will be diagnosed with HIV and AIDS in their lifetime. As a health care advocate, I'm especially pleased today with the work of our health director, Siobhan Arline Bradley. As she initiated a national day of unity and introduced a new social justice HIV and AIDS manual targeted to leaders in the faith community. Working with our religious affairs community, this manual offers faith leaders an overview of why HIV is a social justice issue and what our community can do to address it. It also serves as a road map as they take their congregations from awareness to advocacy. Through this game-changing health education and training manual, Prevention in AACP is within our reach, but we have to do our part to end this epidemic. Courage must not skip this generation. And so as we cope with the multiplicity of assaults on our voting rights, 
our economic freedoms, and even our human dignity. We like to think that we've come through our hardest times, but then we hear the news. In Chicago, Reverend Deer, mostly black-on-black gang-related violence and murders are up some 38 percent. This year, 224 people have been killed. It's widely reported that these numbers are far more than the number of American soldiers killed in Afghanistan. A woman named Maya Hadari from the south side of Chicago told the New York Times, and I quote, that's somebody's husband. That's somebody's son, and they're dying right down there on the block. It hurts. It hurts. Is anybody listening? Does anybody care about, about the black-on-black -black crime in our communities? We must address this issue in our communities. Because have we reached a point that life doesn't mean anything to us anymore? I can hear our friends in hip hop as they remind us with their slang, YOLO, you only live once. And then we see others who are experiencing a different type of pain with a growing rate of unemployment in urban centers. While those running for office say that the national unemployment rate of 8% is a concern, we want to hear what you have to say about unemployment in the African American community that is currently more than 14% and 11% for Latinos. The old expression is that when Wall Street sneezes, America gets a cold. Well, We've not recovered from pneumonia we got in 2008. To avoid another economic calamity that will fall hardest on our community, we must demand that our elected leadership end casino capitalism. We need the banking and finance industries to be regulated in ways that prevent them from playing with our money and playing with our lives and jeopardizing the future of our families. Some of our brothers and sisters have become apathetic and have given in to despair in the face of these overwhelming economic barriers. But that's not the way of the NAACP, Bishop Graves. Never has been and never will be. We must be the face of hope for those who look to us for authentic leadership. We must be the voice of hope for the voiceless. For when our children, like Vivica and like Morgan Jealous and even like Little Jackson, when they look up into our eyes, they should see faces of hope and people of action. The German theologian Martin Luther said, everything that is done in the world is done by hope. Just think of the possibilities that await us as a nation when we begin to affirm and to see the faces of those who are a different race, of a different religion, of a different ethnicity, and yes, my friends, of a different sexual orientation. Our hope for the nation is a society where all individuals have equal rights and equal protection under the law, without barriers and without discrimination. That is why in May we voted to support marriage equality. But I believe, my friends, that there's still hope in the NAACP. For when I look at Wake County, North Carolina, when the school board was taken over by the Tea Party, conservatives promoting racial segregation, our state conference president 
Reverend Dr. William Barber was arrested for protesting that destructive plan. He became the face of hope for the residents of Wake County who got organized and took back that school board from the Tea Party. We can overcome, my sisters and brothers. We can overcome these malicious attacks from ultra-conservatives, but it takes hard work and it takes determination. Achieving our goals for the future will not be easy. But nobody told us it was going to be easy. For as the elders in the Arizona Hopi Nation say, now is the time that we must go back and tell the people, this is the hour. The time of the lone wolf is over. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your attitude and from your vocabulary. All that we do now in AACP must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration because we are the ones we've been waiting for. Yes, we are the ones we've been waiting for. For in our darkest hours, our hope was built on nothing less in Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We dared not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on, on Jesus' name. So today we believe, or whether you believe in the prophet, or whether you believe in the poet, the priest or the preacher, we've got to hold fast firmly to the confession of this hope unwavering because he who promised yes he is he is faithful to deliver and so it is with this hope that in november we will go to the polls to make audible the whispered narratives of those who dreamed impossible dreams with this hope we know that justice will roll down like water and righteousness like an overflowing stream. With this hope, we have no doubt that the valleys will be exalted and the mountains will be made plain. With this hope, bigotry, hatred, racism, discrimination, homophobia will all be eliminated. With this hope, that runs deep within our NAACP veins. We will raise our voices in the words of James Weldon Johnson. We're gonna sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the presence has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. In AACP, we gonna march on, march on, march on, march on, march on, march on, till victory is won. With this hope, we find confidence in the fact. Pennsylvania Avenue that it is the Lord who is our shepherd I don't know about you but I feel like David tonight that the Lord is my shepherd that's relationship I shall not want that provision he makes me to lie down in green pasture that's rest he leadeth me beside he restored my soul that healed. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness that God is for his name's sake. That's purpose. But yea, though I walk, though I walk 
Oh, 